uh, it's been a little dry in, in San Francisco. There's a, uh, you know, more again, more maybe more of a punk scene and more of a alternative thing. But I'm I'm not um the guy. I don't hang around in, in a lot of those bars with the 19 year old kids and check out and wait for the new um the next new band. I'm I'm at home changing diapers and and dealing with all the rest of that stuff. What I have noticed about San Francisco and the music scene lately is a bit of a resurgence in sort of that the whole Bay Area thrash scene from back in the days when you guys were doing your thing and starting out. Bands like Testament, uh, their new record is very, very solid. Uh, Exodus about to hit the road again. Does, is, is there any sort of sense of pride uh, from Metallica? in Because for many, many years, you were about the only band from that era that was still flying the flag. Now you see, like I mentioned, the Testaments and the Exodus is out there doing their thing. Is there maybe a sense of pride in Metallica? Like, hey, you know what? This did mean something after all outside of just what we've um, accomplished yeah i think that we've always felt that it, it always i mean that it meant something i mean there was a scene it was a particular moment in history it was a very vibrant and there was a lot of kind of vitality and, and energy in the air in 83 84 85 um and you felt like we were we felt like all felt like we were the center of the universe and and it was um it was really exciting and it's great when bands like testament and exodus and so on, still represent that out there. Um, you know, listen, <laughs> 25 years later, first of all, it's amazing that most of us have survived. Exactly. You know, and, and, and rest in peace those who haven't. But, you know, and haven't outgrown the style of music. Yeah, too, yeah, yeah. Know? I mean, it, it's amazing that, you know, we can all still, <laughs> I mean, let's, it's amazing we can all reproduce. <laughs> you know, it's amazing <laughs> that we've all found a way to uh, keep the metal flowing through our, our veins and, and all that type of stuff in the last few years. And, and I'm just happy and, 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 and thankful that you guys give a shit that much music we were 10 minutes ago still give a shit. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's it's pretty incredible that um, 25 – because if you had asked us 25 years ago – Right. It makes a lot of noise. If you had asked us 25 years ago whether we would be sitting, you know, here – in the bowels of the Enormo Dome in Vancouver and, and getting ready to play to 19,000 people and we would still be making records and still be somewhat coherent and functioning. And I mean somewhat uh, coherent and functioning. You're still a very vital band, though. Let's well, be honest, I appreciate you know? that. Thank you. I, 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 I'm not saying that, but if, if you had asked me 25 years ago whether that was a possibility, I, I would absolutely not think that that would be a possibility because I think we all felt like we were on a on – a, on a path to crashing and burning. I mean, we, everything we were doing was so full on all the time that the only way out was crash and burn. And and so the fact that we're all still sitting here, that's pretty amazing, amazing feat in itself. <laughs> well, the first time I saw you guys was in, I guess, what was the Ride the Lightning Tour. You played a place here called the New York Theater with sure. Metal Church on the yeah. bill. And I'd been to all kinds of other shows, big shows. You know, we mentioned the Motley Crue's and, and, and the band's of the era and some of the bigger ones at the time compared to you guys at the time, the Judas Priest and stuff, sure. seeing that Metallica show. And I saw a few others like that afterwards. Those to me were dangerous, dangerous rock shows. They just yeah. seemed like that, you know, anything could go sideways <laughs> at any minute. But I when know. you go see some of the other, ba you know what I'm saying though, right? So when you, I know what you're saying, when, when it, it's surprised, if you would have asked, I, I'm sure if I would have sat here beside you 25 years ago and asked you that question, yeah. I don't doubt you would have no. said, are you kidding me? I'll be done in a no. year. You were already be doused in three beers and you exactly know. <laughs> little Jagermeister. <laughs> right, exactly. You're the reason I discovered Jagermeister, right, right. actually. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I blame it all on Hetfield. <laughs> um, no, it is it is pretty amazing. Listen, you know, last night we were down in Seattle and a couple of the guys from Metal Church were there. A couple of the guys from Queensrÿche were there. It was pretty amazing. It was it was a lot of fun and and um, you know, uh, my friend um, who I actually played with before. Um, uh, before I met James Hetfield, um, was a guy named Jeff Warner who used to play in a band called Black and Blue, yeah. which was the band that first recorded a Little Mountain and was the band that was actually responsible for Bon Jovi going to Bruce Fairburn and Little Mountain because they supported Bon Jovi on a tour and he really liked the way the record sounded, so he came to Little Mountain and then the rest is history. But he was there last night and we hadn't seen for a long time also, so it, it's pretty cool how you know, a bunch of people are still around, and, and we can sort of remember the old days without being too nostalgic about it, but still celebrate where everybody's at today, you know. <laughs> ¶¶ 